I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna warn you, I may have taken a few liberties here. I agree. Okay. okay, okay. I begin with seating. Paul's mid-century style sofa is actually new and it's a neutral, earthy color. The one I found is vintage and not. Yes, I see that it's blue. But let me explain that, okay? Because you're being awfully quiet right now. Well, I'm waiting to hear the I appreciate that. Down. It was such a great couch, and it was such a great price, and it was so the right style that I thought maybe that's our pop of color. One of the things about that I really like about this sofa is the lines feel a little more unusual. Oh. And the lines on this feel a little more common. No girl likes being called common, Paul, just for the record. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm not calling a girl that, I'm calling the sofa okay. that. It still stings a little, but moving on. Paul loved his vintage chairs because of the interesting backs, which could be seen when walking into the room. The chairs I found have a similar curved back, but no caning detail. The, the chairs are great, I love the chairs. I love that they're very modern. They're not quite as ethnic as these chairs, but one thing I do like is I do like this joint detail on the corner. It's a nuance that is easy to get lost if you're not looking for it. The piece has a, a lot more identity than you initially yeah. thought. Okay, bench. Very plain. You added your pop of color with the bench, but I thought I need to maybe reel in the color thing since I went with blue on the couch. So in order to balance that, I went with the plain wood bench. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this. The, 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 the other pieces that you showed me uh -huh. seem really interesting and feel really well made. This to me doesn't have any of those <laughs> great characteristics. Since one of the things that Paul pointed out about his room is that it's got some different styles going on, I show him my traditional find to mix in with the mid-century stuff I've found. I was thinking it would look really good with the sofa, but I wasn't sure about the chairs. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. The finish on this is high polish. It's English like, traditional. Right, the wood itself is what, what's called crotch wood. Why would they call it that? Well, the crotch quite literally is where the, where they start to veer. Oh. Sort of like the fork in the tree. And that's They couldn't they, just call it the fork? Okay, I feel like we're getting a little off track here. There are ways to make that piece work. The woman at the store suggested that I cut off the, just take the top and put a new base on it. That would be one way to do it. Another way is to paint the base. Oh, clearly I'm having better luck with the mid-century. So, I was also very proud of this one. Love it. The traditional drop leaf table in Paul's design belonged to the homeowner before Paul came along and was incorporated into the more mod room. The one I found was definitely not traditional. And I love it, and it's a beautiful piece. As for colors, Paul stressed that his color palette was mostly earth tones with a few pops of bright color. I may have strayed from his advice on this one. I was thinking that since I chose the couch that was the navy blue, that maybe that would play off each other, but you're looking like I'm just talking to a wall. I think you got it right on the money. Really? Are you serious? Mm-hmm. Because <gasps> what you did was... Whoa, just give me a second to take <laughs> that in. You want things to go, not to match. Right. And so... I did say that. That really brings in the brown in those other pieces. The blue starts to give the blue sofa a little bit more sort of a raison d'etre. You know, some sort of anchor point. That's totally what I was thinking. <laughs> You know, sometimes it just happens in there without my even knowing. It's magic. And finally, my side tables for the pop of color. They're beautiful. I think sort of stylistically, they certainly go with the other things that you're putting together. The only thing I missed was the piano. You could get like a little Casio keyboard. Yeah, oh, Casio. I think I might have one in my mom's basement. This makes me nervous. But if you had to grade me, what would it be? To grade you. I know, that wouldn't be an A. I get it. I would give you a... Um... A! He said A! Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Period! Cut! <laughs> I give you an A, absolutely. No, I think you it... wouldn't. You lie. No, no, I think, I think it to offer a mix that sort of bridges more than one style, it's something that I'm called to do all the time, and you have to really develop a, a sort of an ability for that, but also a vision on a case-by-case -case basis to really know what makes sense. Most of these pieces, I think, go great together. So it's all about the mix. Exactly. Paul's inspirational mod living room cost about $31,000. My Bring It Home version came in at nearly a tenth of the price, $3,300. We've done the searching so that you don't have to. Totally selfless, really. Just head to bringithomechicago.com to get a second look at anything you've seen during today's show so that you too can bring it home.